Hi, this is Abhinav and Neil. And this, this is a presentation for our first project for ECE 6435. Yeah. yeah. Without further ado. So the remote setup for the FPA bot went very well. We were able to compile and send and get our data. However, the in-class setup did not go very well. And well, there was a problem with the computer. It was not compatible with the USB. But other than that, it went well. Okay, so we did gate sweeps of the NFET and PFET. We have the subthreshold uh, current equations right here, which is what we fit to uh, when we plotted VGIS. And this is one of the resulting plots from the NFET. When we did our gate sweep, we have our curve fit right here with our uh, saturation current and our kappa value, our threshold voltage which was estimated from uh, the intersection of these two lines. Next sweeps that we did were the source sweeps of the NFET and PFET uh, to get the thermal voltage. So before on the gate sweeps, we, got, we fitted to the saturation current and kappa values. Then we used that here to find the thermal voltage. And these are the circuit configurations for sweeps and here is the resulting graph that we got for the PFET. I bring up the PFET because there were some issues uh, with the NFET, uh, not so much. So although we got a, a pretty decent thermal voltage value, we couldn't fit exactly to the equations, so we didn't quite understand maybe the circuit configuration or uh, how to transform the data to get the correct fit. Well, okay, what we expected to find was essentially this, but shifted such that the threshold was much closer to something like 0.7. The reason being is that we would expect this voltage to allow the MOSFET to reach threshold at around 0.7 because uh, you essentially meet the criterion at that point, for most MOSFETs at least. So we would expect the same general trend where it's off, 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 and then all of a sudden when there is a sufficient source voltage to turn the PFET on, then that's when you see uh, an increase in current. However, we just got a shifted version of what we expected, which resulted in a really low saturation current. However, the slope was fine, so we got a decent thermal voltage. So the saturation currents we got were in the picoamp, femtoamp range, which is exactly what we'd expect for a saturation current in MOSFETs. And we got kappa values around 0.7 is the expected, but 0.6, uh, 2.7 is exactly what we would expect. So these are good values. And the thermal voltages that we got agree approximately with room temperature values of about uh, 25 millivolts, which is what we'd expect. They're a little bit lower, but essentially they're in agreement. After completing a regression analysis, we worked on some simple transistor circuits. We built a source follower amplifier using the block diagram that we, that we can see on the slide. And we changed the bias voltage and we realized that as the bias voltage went up, the amplifier gain was seen to drop. We also tried making some plots of kappa using the equations that we had derived in class. Um, I'm not really sure how we we would go about explaining the trend that we are seeing here. Maybe we can go back and think about channel length modulation and how you know, depletion capacitance might be coupling in on kappa. We just found this formula on Wikipedia and we've been thinking about it, but we are really not sure about what's happening here. But those plots definitely look very interesting. So here we have a high gain common source amplifier where it's very similar to the follower as before simply the inputs are reversed so that we have an effective resistor which is a biased MOSFET at the top. Over to the right we have a graph of V out over VN for the amplifier where we can curve fit and find the gain of uh, the amplifier. The difference between these curves is the density of measurement. So we have more measurements uh, per step of input voltage for the orange and less for the blue. This actually ended up resulting 
and completely different measurements for gain, which honestly we don't know how to explain. We are also told to measure things like early voltage, which I guess in this case would be channel length modulation factor, and uh, UT and kappa, and estimate the current flowing through this amplifier, however, uh, through the voltage relations the LVN, we only really get kappa, so I don't really know how to get those other values. Next we begin to build the transconductance amplifier, and here you can see the block diagram of the circuit. Uh, it's also acting as a low pass filter, and then we just measure the voltage at the, at the end, and here we get a nice graph of V out over VN, take the slope, so we get the gain of the circuit which is very close to unity, which is exactly what we would expect uh, for the open circuit characteristic. And similarly, when we do the closed circuit characteristic, when we have a capacitive load, which is effectively this OTA at the end of the LPF, then we just measure the voltage at the output, and what you see is a little tapering off at the end of the of the graph and we have a little lower gain but still very close to unity which is also exactly what we would expect.